This is BigBrotherNetwork.com here with Big Brother house guest Howard. Howard, tell Big Brother Network readers about you, your background, what might have stood out about you during the casting to get you here. Uh, well, my name is Howard and I'm from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, 29 years old. I'm a youth and family advocate and counselor. Um, that basically entails me um, creating a, a bridge between uh, youth families and school system and also different services that they uh, didn't know that they were privy to. Um, what might have impressed producers, I guess, about me or casting agents? Um, just my realness. Um, um, I'm not fake at all, straightforward, but you never really know what you're going to get because you never really know what I'm thinking. Um, but uh, being a, a black Southern gentleman as, as I am, um, I'm very intellectual. Um, I, I love people. Um, of course, I work for people. Mm. Um, and I just have a big, great spirit about me. Um, I love God, and I, I want to play this game morally, uh, but I know that you know there's a lot of uh, chicanery and you know backbiting and stuff like that that goes on, but I would love to be the first African-American to win this show. Um, I would love to be uh, the first person also to play this game, you know, straight up, you know, without too much backbiting and too much lying and deceiving going on, as well as in the private times, you know, where, where there's a lot of downtime, you know, not lose my mind or, you know, misrepresent myself or what I believe in. All right, so on the Big Brother fan scale, are you a complete newbie, casual viewer, hardcore fan, somewhere in between? Um, probably in between the latter. Um, I started out a hardcore fan. First three seasons, I didn't miss a show. Yeah. I think the show first started when I was a 10th grader. And, uh, man, I was there every day, every time it came on. Um, I went to, went to college, of course, played ball, and I didn't watch TV that much. Um, I think I picked back up around season seven. And which was a, a good season. That was all star season, mm. and um, you know, fell back in love with it. But you know, with work and life going on, you you kind of hit or miss on a couple seasons. But now, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get back acclimated to the show. So tell us about your strategy. Are, are you thinking physical, social, alliance? Where are you going? Um, definitely alliance and social a bit. Um, I want to go into the house. Um, being being a minority, um, knowing that no African American has ever won this game. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be the biggest guy on the show, but I, I'm physically fit, and that can pose to be a threat, you know, walking through day one. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not going to shy away from being social just to break down a little barrier, barriers and whatnot. Um, but I definitely, as far as game plan, want to, um, um, I'm, I analyze a lot. I'm a deep thinker, so I'm going to be looking at other threats in the house, and hopefully there are about three or four that I can pick out that I feel will play the game um, excellently or will really think it out um, as far as, as the future goes. And I want to align myself with those people and, and just forge a bond with them secretly. From there, I'll just take the obligatory alliance publicly, um, which everybody will know about, but kind of just be a mole in that alliance and just play the numbers from there. Um, I would love to use, I'm, I'm going after head of household early. I'm, I'm not shying away from any power early because if you're already a threat, why not? Um, I, I look for I look forward to going towards it early because I want to use head of household. I want to use um, the power of veto to do my biggest politicking. I don't want people coming to me when I have the power. I want to go to them. That way, when they have the power, I don't have to go to them at all. So um, that's that's my basic premise for the game. From there, it's kind of like Monopoly, man. You you can do all the planning and the real estate buying you want, but at the end of the day, it's about how the dice fall. So imagine this scenario. Your ally is on the block and you're competing for the power of veto. To win that veto and save your ally, would you be willing to accept the following punishments? Burn the clothes you're wearing. Yeah, I'd do it. Would you take a chum bath every hour for a day? Yeah. Shave your head, well. <laughs> not, not a problem, not right? Yeah, it's not a problem right there. <laughs> Eat slop for a week. That's that's an iffy one right there, man. Eat slot for a week. Um, again, I'm a southern boy. I love food, but I've also competed in bodybuilding um, two years ago, so I'm used to dieting rigorously um, for a year. So uh, what the hell? I'll do it for a week. If it's just for a week. All right, next one for a month. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't do it for a month. All right, lastly, give up your opportunity to compete in the following week's HOH comp. with the proper alliances, yes. Okay. It's the last night of the season. You've made it to the final two. Wow. You're about to face the jury and hear their decision. Do you want them to vote for you based on 
emotional connections, or competitive victories during the season? You know, I, I thought about this in my room today. I'm thinking about the game. I have a lot of time to think yeah. about right now. And I think I sided with the, the emotional part. Um, I say that because um, my realness in, in um, time apart or time with people and breaking down barriers and, and getting to know people socially um, and um, personally, I, I think my realness is something that uh, America will, will like. Um, being, this, being this black guy, this black guy from Mississippi, this real guy, this Christian, you know, breaking down what makes me tick from beginning to end. I don't mind sharing my story or my testimony with anybody. Um, so in that downtime, I think that's going to help me from a strategic standpoint as well. Um, as far as if I do have to make a move you don't like, hey, you do know me and I'm real and that was just me playing the game. Nothing personal. Like, I have to win this because I can't go home empty-handed. So definitely I would side with that um, emotional, um, you know, side with your heart. And lastly, tell our readers at BigBrotherNetwork.com why you are the house guest they should root for this season. I'm the house guest you should root for this season because, hey, um, just a southern boy from, from Mississippi. Um, this is something that doesn't happen to guys like me. Um, it's something that hasn't happened ever in the history of Big Brother, um, having an African American to actually win this game, um, to be consistent. Um, there's, there's been so many um, Christians or, or, or uh, people that, that really, uh, really love their religion on this show, and they didn't make it through. Um, and I want to be that person, but I also want to be that person that can be that and play the game as well and not be hypocritical at all. And um, being the first person to do that, having the mantra of being the first African American to win Big Brother, I mean, it's, it's so, it's, it's bigger than me. It, and it's going to represent um, so much more than just um, one guy winning this show. This is not just for me. It's for so many other people, so many other kids that I've worked with that, um, you know, they don't want to get out of Mississippi. They don't think the, the world is bigger than Mississippi, you know, and and they see me, you know, and I'm, I'm from the same corner you're from. I'm, I'm right around the corner. I'm the same country boy that, that you are, and I made it so you can too. All right. Thank you, Howard, and good luck. We'll be watching. Appreciate it, man. Thank you.